So when we think of gaming, we don't think of the iPhone 13 mini, but honestly, this little thing packs a punch with the A15 processor. So let's go ahead and find out if we can game successfully with the iPhone 13 mini. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and welcome to my video on gaming on the iPhone 13 mini. Now, before we go ahead and check out this tiny little device, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and notification icon on this video. Now, I also wanna give a big shout out to our sponsor of this video, Jaybirds, with your Jaybird Vista 2. Stay tuned for more information about them because they are some pretty cool headphones. So, the iPhone 13 mini, it is a small device. Honestly, it is quite quaint, if you will fits in the palm of my hand, like it, it's that small. Uh, for me, it's really, really small, I'm gonna say it again. But uh, this is a device that a lot of people like the form factor and size, 5.4 inches, uh, it feels like it's very nice and pocketable, and a lot of people are looking for devices like this who are iOS users. So of course it makes sense to see how well it performs with gaming, which is why Apple has the A15 processor in here. And that makes a lot of sense. You wanna give kind of the same um, functionality across the board for a lot of people. This also comes with four gigs of RAM and about a 2400 milliamp battery. The right numbers on the screen for you to check out. So let's just jump into our very first game. And of course you guys know, it's gonna be Call of Duty Mobile. I know some of you are gonna start complaining, but honestly, Call of Duty Mobile is a good way to start as a benchmark. And I use uh, Game Bench here to actually test this out if you wanna use them. I have a link for you guys in the description of this video. So Call of Duty runs well. It does. It runs at uh, 60 frames per second. We had the game running on its highest setting and it looked good. It played well, uh, but honestly, it felt really smooth. I mean, just in general, so which is nice. Now there's no ProMotion display on the Mini, but performance was pretty nice. So I also went ahead and checked out a game on um, Apple Arcade, which is, uh, of course, 2K21. Now, 2K played well, and do not mind the score on this, though, because I'm terrible. I was terrible at it. I was trying to focus on on, uh, on recording, but also ran at 59 frames per second, solid, solid 60 FPS, if you will. No dips in performance anywhere. Now, the cool thing about the iPhone uh, series this year is that Apple has done some improvements to the speakers. So let's take a quick listen doing some gameplay on how the speakers sound. On the iPhone 13 mini, they do a good job but they're not as good, I would say, as the other iPhone 13 devices, which is why I would recommend you use True Wireless Buds for your gaming experience. And speaking of True Wireless Buds, our sponsor in this video is Jaybird, and I have the Jaybird Vista 2, which I have been using for a while, so it's not something that I don't use, and I can fully recommend them because the six millimeter drivers on them do a really good job for that gaming experience. You get the sound really well, plus, the application allows you to do much more than just listen to music and customize EQs. You have different sound profiles, which you can use for different things. I have one for gaming. I've got one uh, for working out. And speaking of working out though, this thing is durable. It, they call it airproof durability, uh, but honestly, it does a great job in the gym. I use it every time to work. I use it in a lot of places too, like me, you know, walking around in the park and being aware of my surrounding because of the sound sense A and C and showing off my soccer skills. Uh, well, at least whatever is left of it anyway. Uh, and the battery life is great at 24 hours with eight hours per buds, five minutes of charge, you give me an hour. These are good pair of buds to definitely pick up, especially with the iPhone 13 mini. So if you're going to do that, definitely head over to jbirdsports.com or your local Best Buy. And if you use the link down below, you get 10% off using the promo code. Now let's get back to what we do best here, which is game. Next up is Genshin Impact. Ooh, this one was very, very interesting. So I played Genshin Impact on the iPhone 13 mini for roughly around uh, 20 to 25 minutes. Within the first five minutes of gaming with Genshin Impact, my frames per second dropped drastically uh, down. And by the time I played for an additional 15 minutes, I had uh, uh, my frames drop down to about 36 frames per second, which is unheard of. Now I'm playing the game 
at max settings, 60 FPS on the iPhone 13 mini. So I, I'll say this again, I know a lot of the games are not optimized yet for the A15, so that is one thing to take note, but I was, I was expecting similar results to what I had in the Pro Max, which was a drop down to about 41 to 42 frames per second, not all the way down to the mid 30s. Now, this also could, to be, could be attributed to the fact that the iPhone uh, 13 mini only has four GPU cores as opposed to more on the uh, Pro and Pro Max. So the regular GPU cores definitely showcase here for a game like Genshin Impact, which is very graphically intensive. One thing I did notice is that my screen felt really hot. Now, this did not, this was not the case with the iPhone uh, 13 Pro Max, which has a bigger surface area. So I'm thinking because of the smaller screen size, you're gonna feel more heat on the screen. Now, in terms of temperatures, we got temperatures of about 111 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, about 43 to 44 degrees Celsius, similar again to the Pro Max. So we're having the same kind of temperatures, which means internals are the same, cooling is practically the same for, for both devices, I feel, across the iPhone 13 uh, lineup, so that's there. Now, we're gonna end up with our last game, which will be PUBG Mobile. Now, PUBG Mobile is a game that some people say, hey, play in Battle Royale um, and play uh, for long periods of time. Also, you can play on 90 frames per second. I know you can do that, but the average gamer is gonna pick it up, install, and play. Now, until it's optimized fully uh, for 90 FPS or more, uh, we will have to see that, of course, on the Pro Max. But anyway, on this device, I played PUBG Mobile for about 40 minutes. That was as long as my uh, Battle Royale gameplay session was, and it ran well. It ran well on Smooth Extreme, 59 frames per second. There was no dip whatsoever. So it performed as it should very, very well. And I was quite impressed with that, especially for kind of the longer gameplay period, um, running to people left and right, trying to get killed, and also eventually winning. Yes, <laughs> I won uh, my chicken dinner. It's been a while since I've done that on PUBG, honestly. So yeah, that was actually pretty cool. But that means that this performed well enough for me to go ahead and do that quite well. Now, the other thing, of course, some of you would ask me is what about game streaming services? So I went ahead and tried out Xbox uh, Game Pass. Games ran at 60 FPS, that wasn't the issue, and um, it ran also very well. Um, the one thing I will note though to you guys, and I know a few people have mentioned this before, is the screen did dim down uh, while I, I was playing um, Xbox Game Pass, which is roughly around about an hour and a half to two hours of gaming. And this happened with my Pro Max as well, that kind of dropped down, uh, the, the display basically just dimmed down when it was about maybe, I believe it was about three hours of gaming or four, so it's a slightly different time frames, uh, but it did dim down even though my, my brightness was at max uh, resolution, uh, max setting, so that is something that has to do with extended game play periods. Now, the uh, Mini works well, no issues with the backbone, doesn't fall out or anything, so if you're gaming with the backbone, it's absolutely fine. But besides even that though, I really love this green case on the iPhone 13 mini. It is so nice. I know you guys can see it clearly, but it's a lovely case. Uh, it's just really nice soft silicone feel to it. Honestly, if you're looking for a case, uh, that's, that's also a good one to pick up for your iPhone 13 mini. Look, the four cores, especially for a graphically intensive game, we're gonna see some dips. Now I'm waiting for uh, games like uh, Genshin to be updated to run with the A15 and we'll of course run that again. Uh, but uh, we, I can tell you that that's gonna show you some dip at some point. In terms of most of the other games, you're gonna be able to play them very fine. Now temperatures will rise up and I don't think it's gonna overheat because the iPhone tends to throw things down from what it seems, at least from the two cases I've seen, where your screen dims down, trying to make sure that your system does not overheat. Battery life. Battery life was better than the mini, but not great. So what I mean by better than me was better than the iPhone 12 mini last year. It completely drained by the time I started gaming. So, so far with about uh, two and a half hours of gaming, starting at 100%, I am down to about 70%. Now this is with some charging in here or there. So I'm looking at about a 20% loss, uh, 20 to 25% loss or so, 
which for the Mini compared to what I had last year is much better. So I would say you can game, but still have a charger on hand. So there you go, guys. If you have any questions, any comments about gaming on the iPhone 13 Mini, let me know or any other uh, iPhone or Apple devices. I'll be covering gaming on the iPad mini as well. So stay tuned for that. And also take a look at the Jaybirds Vista 2. Like I said, this is something I use myself. You guys can check them out. Use the link down below uh, if you want to pick one up or check it out at your local Best Buy. So this is Thunder E saying thank you. Stay tuned. Have a fun day and always enjoy your entertainment.